Hi, I'm Lance Schrader, Customer Technology Specialist out of our Marysville location. And I'm glad that you can join me as I go over many planner settings. If you have any questions after these videos, please contact your local landmark location. Welcome to the individual row hydraulic downforce session. We're first going to go over some components and then go over some screen operation. So I'm going to start out here just components of the hydraulic downforce system. And the first one we see, we have the accumulator here, along with our valve and coil. And then we have a pressure sensor here. And once again, this is on each row, and they work independently from each other. While we're here, we can see uh, these two valves here with the red caps. That is for our air purge. And we need this hose here that comes with each planter. And we'll stick it in these ports and do the air purge test, which will be in a separate video. We have to do that every time we hook the hydraulics back up to the tractor. So if you have to unhook the tractor to hook onto something else and then you come back right away and hook up to the planter, we still have to do the air purge test. We have our cylinder here that connects to our uh, main row unit parallel arms as well as our shank. And then the other piece of the puzzle here is the gauge wheel sensor right in here and that's on every single row once again and that tells the load on the gauge wheels and then this coil here will change accordingly to what we have our margin set at. Another couple components of the system is our accelerometer which is found in our row unit controller which is hidden inside here and what that accelerometer does for us is it monitors our ride quality as well as our ground contact making sure that we have good ground contact to keep our consistent seed depth, which is very important in uniform emergence, which affects yield. So the big thing to monitor and downforce is margin. That's what we set um, for our active pneumatic and our individual rotor hydraulic downforce systems. So kind of just to explain it in visual terms here, we have the weight of the row unit, and then we have resistance of the soil that's pushing back up, and then the additional downforce is the other force. So let's say, for instance, the weight of the row unit was 150 pounds. Resistance from the soil was 150 pounds. And our additional downforce was 200. Our margin is going to be 200 pounds. So another way to look at it is the margin as the weight that is on the gauge wheel here. It's the additional downforce required to get to our seed depth and hold it in the ground. So the big thing to monitor and downforce is margin. That's what we set um, for our active pneumatic and our individual rotor hydraulic downforce systems. So kind of just to explain it in visual terms here, we have the weight of the row unit, and then we have resistance of the soil that's pushing back up, and then the additional downforce is the other force. So let's say, for instance, the weight of the row unit was 150 pounds. Resistance from the soil was 150 pounds. And our additional downforce was 200. Our margin is going to be 200 pounds. So another way to look at it is the margin as the weight that is on the gauge wheel here. It's the additional downforce required to get to our seed depth and hold it in the ground. So looking at a seed trench after we've gone through tie the closing wheels up in this example here. But this is what a good seed trench looks like. So we have some firm sidewalls. It's defined. It's not crumbled in. If I would take and kind of stick my seed digger down in there, it kind of comes in here. So it's not just totally compacted and not hard. 
Obviously soil conditions and soil types will affect this, but this is what we want to see for good seed to soil contact. And that gives our seed the best chance at producing maximum yield. An example of too little downforce is when the seed trench just pretty much crumbles really easily and you can push it in. So there's chances of pockets of air and not very good seed to soil contact and more importantly probably not achieving your correct depth. Another good way of checking downforce at the planter is by getting out with the planter in the ground and checking to see the resistance on the gauge wheel. So if it spins easily like this with not much effort, that means we probably don't have enough downforce. If we come back here and we can't spin this at all, it's just really firm, that's a chance that we have too much downforce. Kind of what we want to see is where we can spin this, but with some good resistance. A good way of checking our downforce margin is by getting out and checking the resistance of the gauge wheels. Now we want to do this as we're planting and come to a stop with the planter in the ground. So if we have too small or too little margin, this gauge wheel is just going to turn freely like this. If we can't turn this gauge wheel at all, even no matter how hard we try or we can barely move it, that means we have probably too much margin. What we want to see for the proper amount of margin is there's some resistance on this gauge wheel, but we still can turn it. Once again, we want to check our seed trench and see how that looks as well to confirm what we're seeing here. In the end cap portion of the active hydraulic downforce, I want to go over how to first enable the system. So we're going to touch the gauge wheels and then we're going to go over here and touch our downforce margin. And then kind of there in the bottom left, we want to go ahead and enable our active downforce. It can be ran in set point mode as you saw there, but the system is designed to run in active downforce where we are working with margin. So the first thing I want to look at here is these three pies up top. This first pie in the top left means we have the sensors available for us. The bottom one is the planter down. And kind of the top right one is planter speed. So for some reason we're not getting one of those, we can use that as a diagnostic tool in order to see what the issue may be why our active downforce system is not working. So if I put the planter down I then will get that bottom piece filled in. And then when I start to move it's going to fill in this top right piece of the pie and when I have all three it will say engaged. Now over here is my target margin. I can adjust that with these plus or minuses to whatever I would like them to be. And as we go through the field, that should adjust for us. Now we can see there that we're getting our downforce, that's what it's actually putting down, and then there's our margin. Now we can see as we're going through the field that here's our actual downforce, and there's what our margin is. So it's going to adjust until it gets to our target. I can change my margin alarms by touching here in the bottom. And I can set the percentages for high margin, my target margin, low margin, my ground contact, as well as my ride quality low. 
So once I've found my margin that I want to run at, I can just X out of this page here. And this is really the page that I like to see as I'm going through the field. These bars will be black and should hover around this middle line when they achieve that downforce margin of a whatever you have it set at. In this case, I have it set at 160 pounds. If they're off, if one row or a couple rows might be off target, they'll first start to go orange and then start to go red, where in that case they will trigger the alarm. Now we can see going through the field how they hover around the black. That's where we want them. As well as our ground contact, we want that in the black too. And going through the field, this is what I like to see with my ground contact high, as well as my margin around that center line. Now if I am curious about a certain row, I can touch on that row and touch once more. And then it'll show my downforce margin for that row as well as the ground contact and ride quality. And then in order to get out of that, I'll touch here in the top left. And it'll kind of bring me back to my home screen. And then I'll go ahead and touch the gauge wheels again to get back to the page I was on. This ground contact, we want that percentage to be pretty high. It will give me my average percentage here as well as the lowest row percentage. I like to see that normally in the uh, mid 90 to high 90 percentile range, uh, if not 100%. One thing I do have to caution people uh, on the ground contact is if you are always 100% um, when you're going through the field, there is a chance that you might be having too much downforce down and that row unit is just stuck in the ground all the time. So that's always something to take into consideration. So that's why I say the, the high 90 percentile is really what I shoot for. It's always one of those deals where you have to get out and check to evaluate what the planner is doing. The button here to the left, to the right, excuse me, that is the actual downforce. So you might care about this if you have a couple rows that are putting down the downforce and if you have a couple rows that are really high um, it'll show up here this top end is about 400 uh, let's say for instance you came across a sprayer track or a compaction layer somewhere there might be one or two or several rows that show up uh, that it's putting downforce down uh, but the others may not and that is the beauty of the individual hydraulic downforce system so we'll go back down here to our ground contact page. Like I said, this is the page that I really like to run on because it gives me a visualization of everything that is going on with my downforce. And this ground contact helps me set my margin, which there's also a module over here that you can add to increase your downforce. You can just touch that by hitting the plus and minus. Right now we're set on 20 pound increments. If you would like to go less than that, we're gonna to touch our downforce margin. And then we're gonna come up here to this arrow up and touch that. And then we're gonna scroll down to the downforce where increment adjustment is. I can change that here. Let's say I wanna change that to 10 pound increments instead. I can use just the keypad to do that. Then I can X out of that page and it gets me back and now it'll adjust in 10 pound increments instead. So looking at some diagnostics portions of this hydraulic downforce, I can actually go to the tools and then I'll go to the planner diagnostics and calibrations. And then in this diagnostic list, there is a gauge wheel downforce that I can touch. Here it's going to show all my sensors, and I want to make sure that they're enabled. As well as it's going to show 
my supply voltage, the input voltage, as well as the load. Let's say for some reason, one of these loads showed really high when the planter was out of the ground and there was no load on it. We can come down here and touch our calibration. And I recommend doing this at the beginning of the season as needed. We just touch begin calibration with the planter must be raised and the wheel speed must be zero. Then I'll hit next. Then I'll select next to zero all the sensors and calibration successful. Then I can X out of that and X out of that as well. Under calibrations, that's another place that we could find that gauge wheel downforce calibration. As far as procedures, there's a couple that we want to make note of, and this is where we find them, is the air purge test. And that is something that you want to do every single time that you hook up hydraulics to the tractor, as well as it's where we find the valve test. And there will be a separate video to go over that procedure. One other thing I do want to hit on is the right quality. So I'm going to X out of all of these screens. Then if I touch the gauge wheels and then touch the three dots kind of up in the top right and find my ride quality. I can touch that and look at all my rows as well as keep touching rows to look at a certain row, say in this instance row 12. Look at my downforce margin as well as the downforce to ground contact and my ride quality. And I can just return once again by hitting this top left button. So that's the on-screen portion of the hydraulic downforce.